Umbra. Be waiting. In Hammerhead. Was I out? <sighs> Where'd everybody go? Demons everywhere. man standing.
Uh... Yeah? It's me, uh, Talkit. My grandpa served the Amasidia family. Talkit? Yeah. No way. Yes way. Welcome back, Your Majesty. Yes, sir. That's... that's right. Huh? Uh, just a second. Um, said he wants to have a word with you. He can have it in person. He said you can have it in person. Okay. Uh, we should be there shortly, sir. Wow. 
Wow. I can't tell you how good it is to see you again. Yeah, you sure look different, though. You think so? Guess I've grown some these ten years. Ten years? <laughs> the guys must be pinching themselves right now. Where are they, anyway? Listalem, more often than not, but they take a lot of trips to Hammerhead. For? Uh, for Miss Cindy. You know, back at the garage. She's a tough one, but uh, when she needs a little extra muscle out on the road, she gives him a call. <sighs> oh, uh, speaking of which, the guys said they're near Hammerhead right now, so we'll be meeting them there. You know, ever since you disappeared, Your Majesty, it's been nothing but nighttime nonstop. Lestalem still has light thanks to the power plant, so just about everyone's taken refuge there. Only there? Everywhere else has been abandoned. Demons moved in, forcing the people to move out. People still swing by the garage at Hammerhead from time to time, but it usually isn't for repairs. These days it's less of a service station and more of a slayer station, a base for demon hunting. The garage is still open though, one of the few places that is. So, um, Sid, is he still alive and kicking? <laughs> He's kicking all right, just not as hard as before. He hasn't really been himself lately. At least, not since he moved out to Lestalem. Someone suggested he move the garage there, too. But old man Sid wasn't having it. He called it a big, fat, chocobo turd of an idea. Said it just wouldn't be the same anywhere else. That sounds like Sid, all right. Miss Cindy said she didn't mind either way. So the garage will probably stay put for a while. And without any tinkering to do, Ignis's gourmet seafood is about all Sid has left to look forward to. With all the demons prowling around, more folk were getting hurt. Or worse. So Iris talked the marshal into taking out the demons themselves. Iris the Demon Slayer, they call her. Gladio and the others, they lend him a hand whenever they can. Prompto spends most of his time hunting around Hammerhead. He tries to impress Miss Cindy, but she's already married to her work. And Ignis? He hunts too. We tried to stop him, but he wouldn't listen. He said if anything, he's more used to the darkness than we are. Never got his vision back. I'm afraid not. But that being said, he gets by pretty well on his own. Gladio and Prompto usually hunt on their own as well. It isn't often you see the three of them together nowadays. They still work as a team every once in a while, but each has his own set of tasks to keep him busy. Is that so? We've arrived, Your Majesty. Everyone will be so happy to see you. Don't worry. I won't be going anywhere. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to ask. you have to say for yourself after all this time <laughs> knocked it's you it's really Is you it? i hadn't realized well well you kept us waiting not like i wanted to we've got catching up to do let's head inside Hey.
I'll see you later. Welcome. Come again. So, Ignis, you're really cooking like you used to. Well, more or less. I can manage with far less help than I required before. You know, it's okay to ask for help. You don't need to prove anything to us. Probably more about proving it to himself. I say we leave him to it. Yeah, I guess that's how he got so good. Even better than before, if you can believe it. <sighs> My taste buds sure do. Perhaps I've developed a culinary sixth sense. Hey, Iggy. You ought to follow Westcombe's example. Open up a restaurant. I'll give the matter some thought. Assuming such demand still exists in a post-apocalyptic world. I'm more than happy to tell you everything I know. We've even got some former Imperials fighting for us. The toughest of them said she used to lead a band of mercenaries. Arnea? So you do know her. Well, I'm not surprised. The Marshal said she was feared far and wide back in the day. But now she's revered among the Lucian masses. Same with her men, Biggs and Wedge. Each of them leads their own small army. <sighs> That's great. I'm more than happy to tell you everything I know. Oh, right. Uh, about the Empire. Huh. Gladio brought back word that both the Emperor and High Commander were dead. With those two gone, Niflheim pretty much fell apart. Yeah, figured. I'm more than happy to tell you everything I... The Chancellor's still around, though. In Insomnia. <laughs> Nobody who saw him had any clue what he might have been up to. Their stories piqued Ignis's curiosity. I ended up helping Ignis look into the matter, digging through old records, even joining him on trips to the royal tombs. Royally roped into it. <laughs> it's cool. I'm a bit of a history buff myself. But 
we did discover something pretty weird. Huh? While we were poring over all those ancient texts, one name caught our eye. Ardens. Apparently, he was hailed as a savior, healing all those who were ravaged by demons, only to end up branded a demon himself. A dubious charge, I'd say. By all accounts, he was just as human as you and me. Huh. I'm more than happy to tell you everything I know. Your Majesty? Do you remember my grandfather? Yeah. There's something I wasn't able to tell you back then. Grandpa died because of me. It was my fault. An Imperial officer approached me in town, asked if I was from the Crown City, and that was just the beginning. What brings you here, young man? You didn't come here by yourself, did you? Oh, your grandfather's a butler at a manor. How very grand. Oh, he rubs shoulders with the royal family. You must be ever so proud. I answered him without thinking. A little after that, the man showed up at our hotel. Talcott. Think what you will of me, but please know that Grandpa didn't give you away. Listen. Yeah? You're not a kid anymore. You should know by now what happened that day wasn't your fault. None of it. <sighs> you know, it's hard to ask someone about their pain, but it's just as hard to share your own with someone else. I appreciate you opening up to me, and I swear I'll make things right. But believe me when I say nobody blames you. Not me, not your grandpa. Trust me. You have the King's word. I suppose you're right, Your Majesty. Thank you. Safe travels, Your Majesty. <laughs> <laughs>